Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about how to use the oscilloscope to see a signal. Um, I have a signal generated here by the function generator that we're going to use. To look at it, I can connect this uh, BNC cable to this BNC socket, one of these on the board. When you connect it, it has to click. And then you take this wire that's coming from this BNC, from this socket, and you connect it to one of the nodes on the board. And now I can probe this node to look at the signal. So say I'm going to use channel 1. Now one thing important to learn about these uh, probes is that you have a switch here which controls the attenuation of the signal before you see it on the scope. You have X1 which means no attenuation and X10 which means attenuation by 10. So if I'm going to use channel 1, I press on the channel 1 button. And you can see a setting here that says the, what the probe attenuation is. So this number has to match the setting here. So now I'm using X1 here. So this one is 1X. If they don't match, the numbers you get are, will not be correct. So since now we have the correct uh, attenuation on the probe and on the scope, we can look at the signal. Uh, this uh, we use as a ground uh, connection. You can connect it to the body of the board like this. And I can probe this uh, signal here by hooking the end of the probe to it, to the wire. Now I can see there is something on the screen, but it's not stable. So now to stabilize this view, we're going to need what we call the trigger. The trigger settings are on the extreme right end of the scope. You have first, you have the trigger level, trigger menu. And these are the most important things to, to, to learn. So if I press on the trigger menu button and look at the sc screen, I, I have to specify the source of the trigger. You can see the source is channel 2 which is not a good idea because nothing is connected to channel 2. Since I'm using channel 1, I should set the trigger source to channel 1 by pressing this button here. Okay, now the source is channel 1. Still, I don't get a stable view of the signal. So to get a stable view, I can move, adjust the trigger level knob. You can see this cursor on the screen. When you move this knob, this cursor moves. And you have to make it overlap with the signal. That's the uh, critical in order to have the trigger working. And you can see now, since the, the, the cursor overlaps, is within the signal, we have a stable view. Okay, so now when, when you use a trigger source that is channel 1 or channel 2, this is called internal trigger, which is usually fine. But let's say, try to look at a, a tiny signal. I'm going to add attenuation to the signal. And I'm going to try to look at it. So I'm, I'm zoom, here I'm zooming in vertically. This knob changes the vertical scale. You can see I have lost the uh, stable view of the signal. Even though the cursor now overlaps with the signal, the trigger level cursor overlaps with the signal, I still don't have a stable view. So now we need what, what we call the ex external trigger, which means we get we take this, we make a connection from this sync output, sync output of the function generator. We connect it to the external trigger input of the scope. And what this does is it supplies a separate signal with the same frequency from the scope that is clean, regardless of how dirty your signal is. But to, to, to be able to use it, we have to change the trigger source in the trigger menu to external. And now you can see we, we are getting a much clearer picture of the signal. Okay, I have increased the, the amplitude of my signal again, because I want to explain something else. Uh, now we have if you click on the button of the channel that you're using, the, the channel 1 button, you get a number of settings. One of the very important ones is the first one, which is the coupling. 
Now I have the coupling, it says DC. What does DC mean? It means if I add an offset to the signal, I can see it. See, here I'm adding an offset, here I'm removing it. And if you add an offset, if you have DC coupling, this cursor to the left of the screen is your, where your zero is. So it's always a good idea to center this cursor on, on the center line of the oscilloscope. So now you know this horizontal line is where your zero is. So if you care about DC voltages or DC offset, you want to have DC coupling and you want to place your cursor where uh, is convenient. On the other hand, if I make it AC coupled, whatever DC offset is in the signal, whether I remove it or add it, it's gonna be always centered at zero. 